Hey guys, a video I had kind of seen floating around was people who had kept like a year's worth of empties and counted up the value of what they'd used in a whole year. I didn't actively try to keep last year's empties. I did keep some of them because I sort of intended to film an empties video at some point that I never quite did. This isn't all of the empties that I use in a year. There's definitely things like sheet masks that I know that I've definitely used and just gotten rid of, especially like on holiday because Lauren and I basically used a sheet mask pretty much every day that we were in New York and the same in London so this isn't everything but it's everything that I kept. I thought it would be quite a good thing to do because I am obviously aiming to do reverse rouge this year. I think like a thousand dollars seems like quite a daunting task to use up that amount of product but it's January I'm actually doing really well at the time that I'm filming this I've actually used up like $400 worth of product already anyway probably had quite an easy start because I had so much stuff rattling around that I'd like already used three quarters of so there was maybe like a couple of uses left and that was it done so I have probably had quite a kind of easy start with it it's been really cheering to see that and then I found these empties and I thought I'm gonna get the value of this and total this up thought it might be quite encouraging to see what what I managed to use last year when I wasn't making an active effort to try and then you know we can compare it at the end of this year to see how much I actually used up this year when I was trying to use up items. On to what I used up last year. The first category I'm going to go through is makeup so I will start with the kind of non-makeup product that I've put into the makeup category and that is this. This is one of the small Cinema Secrets brush cleaners. I actually have a full blog post coming in this. I am a big fan of this for quick brush cleaning. It doesn't leave your brushes wet. The only thing I would say is that it has turned my MAC 239 slightly blue because it's a bright blue liquid but it didn't ever transfer to the eyes or anything but I would definitely definitely recommend this. I already have repurchased this. Quick and easy. I do think over time it would dry your brushes out but overall I really like it. Next up is the OPI Nail Envy. This looks like it's got stuff left in it but it's too like kind of dried up to actually use. I really like this. I see a huge difference in my nails when I'm using this versus when I'm not. It is expensive but you know I think it's totally worth the price. Sorry I should be saying the price of things that go along. So the makeup brush cleaner is worth $8 and the OPI Nail Envy is worth $17.95. It is one of the more expensive strengtheners out there but I do see a big big difference in the length of my nails when I'm using this so I have repurchased it and I would continue to do so. On to face makeup I used up this primer from Rimmel the Fix Perfect Pro. Now this has got five claims in the front it says it smooths which I would agree with. Also says it's resurfacing which to me in a makeup product resurfacing and smoothing are the same thing. It kind of it's about creating a smooth canvas but I would say that it does that. It creates a nice base. Brightens, I wouldn't say it's particularly brightening but I would use other products for brightening. I wouldn't really be looking for my primer to necessarily do that. It also says it mattifies and I would say it does mattify. It doesn't dry the skin out. I actually really like it. It definitely takes away kind of excess oil but I wouldn't say it's drying on the skin the way that some mattifying products can be and then protects which I don't really get what that's about because it's not got SPF in it so I don't really know what it's claiming to protect the skin from. So I think like the five claims are a bit random but I do actually like it. It's a primer, it extends the longevity of my makeup, it creates a nice kind of smooth base. This is worth $8.49 and I would definitely spend that on it again. I think for a drugstore primer it really is very good. I've used up two foundations, L'Oreal Infallible. In terms of infallible in 24 hours, I'm sure any of you who have heard me talk about this well, no, to me this does not have a great longevity. When I used this at first it just was sliding off my face and it was really really irritating. Once I started using it with the L'Oreal setting spray that made a huge difference and I would actually say this is one of my favourite foundations now. Kind of annoying that you need to use the setting spray with it to get the longevity but the finish of this is beautiful as is the coverage. Medium to full coverage I would say. So it's not quite as full coverage as like my Solider Double Wear which is the next foundation I'm going to talk about but I don't find it dries the skin out or anything like that. Like that. I really really like it. The L'Oreal foundation was worth $12.79. This is worth $42. This is the next one that I'm going to talk about and this is Estee Lauder Double Wear. This is just like a go-to foundation for me when I need my makeup to last all day. I just know it's going to stay in place. It's super high coverage so if I'm not feeling great about my skin definitely would go for this. People do say it's drying but I've got quite oily skin so that doesn't personally affect me but it's just something to bear in mind. I do think you need a good kind of smoothing primer with this because it does sink into pores. As the 
the day goes on but other than that no complaints this is one I always keep in stock because I know it's just such a reliable foundation only concealer that I've got here is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer again I've actually repurchased this but to be honest I don't quite know why I did I don't dislike it but I just prefer the NARS version which is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer for like a liquid high coverage concealer this is $29 I did repurchase it so I didn't dislike it but I just think I prefer the NARS one and the last makeup product that I've got to show you is the Benefit Precisely My Brow Brow Pencil which I really like this it's kind of inspired by the Anastasia um, Brow Wiz it's got your spoolie in one end and then it's just a very very fine pencil on the other end. This is worth $24 and I would definitely pay that for it again. I really enjoyed using it. The next category I am going to talk you through is the hair care that I used up. First of all I used up the L'Oreal Ever Reese Shampoo and Conditioner. These are worth $6.99 each. I definitely would repurchase this actually. It never left my hair feeling weighed down but also always left it feeling quite moisturised and nourished so I would definitely return to these. Another shampoo that I used up and again worth $6.99 was the John Frieda Full Repair. I am a huge fan of the John Frieda Full Repair range. I think it's great. When my hair was really bleached I was using this and it totally brought it back to life. It started growing again. Huge, huge fan. I've actually got like a big like litre pump bottle of the conditioner and I would totally buy the same with the shampoo. I absolutely love this. And then I actually used up I'm counting the Menu shampoo and conditioner because I know I used the shampoo but I've for some reason thrown that out and just kept the conditioner. So the shampoo from this range was worth $26 and the conditioner is worth $30. I did like this but I don't love it. It felt like it was quite, and I know it sounds mad, but it felt like these were really difficult to get out of my hair. Not so much the conditioner but the shampoo. I felt like I had to be rinsing my hair for ages to get it out. And I did like it but it's supposed to be for coloured hair. I didn't really feel like it ever made that much of a difference. It's supposed to be like a illuminating and it didn't feel like it was particularly illuminating. I did I, I did like it. You know, if somebody bought me it again, I would totally use it up. I just feel in comparison to the John Frieda Full Repair and the L'Oreal Ever Reach that I've just spoken about that were $6.99 a bottle. This was quite an expensive range and I didn't love it. Like, I liked it. I just didn't love it. Something that I do love, though, from Davines is this, which is the Alchemy Conditioner. I get it in the Copper, obviously, for my hair colour, but you can get it in various hair colours. It's, I think, I think it does say it's a conditioner but I use it like a mask where I leave it on for kind of 15 minutes. I always feel like I can tell when I've used this. My hair colour just looks suddenly much richer and more radiant. Huge huge fan of this. I've repurchased this many many times and will continue to do so. This is $29.50 and I think it's worth every penny. And the last product, my Philip Kingsley Elasticizer. I absolutely love this. I've gone through many of these. I have another one on the go right now and I have a backup for that one when I've finished this one. I just find this makes my hair like stronger and it conditions it but it never leaves it feeling like weighed down probably because it is a pre-shampoo treatment which I really really enjoy a pre-shampoo treatment because I do have quite fine hair it easily gets weighed down I find if I use something like this and then I'm shampooing it out my hair gets all the benefits but it never feels weighed down I absolutely love this this works out it being worth $85 the last category that I'm going to go through is skincare this was definitely my biggest category so I have kind of broken it down into smaller parts and first of all body care and I've got two shower gels here. One is the big 500 gram snow fairy. This works out at being $32.95. I do quite like this but actually this year I didn't repurchase snow fairy. Up till this year I've actually bought it pretty much every year when it comes out at Christmas but I don't know if I was partly buying it every year because everybody loves it and everybody talks about it do you know what I mean? I do like it but Lush is slightly less expensive in the UK than it is in America. I definitely wouldn't spend $32.95 on it because I think you can get a much more indulgent product for that dollars wise in America but I do think it's still about £20 or something in the UK which I don't honestly know if I think it's worth it. It is like a big shower gel that you get for that money but I don't know. I didn't rush to repurchase it this year and I don't know. I'm not sure if I would run for it again but again if somebody bought me it as a gift I would totally use it up. And the other product that I used up was the Scottish Spring Soaps Company Sea Kelp Body Wash. This is worth $4.63 and I absolutely love this. This smell is just like so nice. It's like a spa. I definitely like this. Definitely would repurchase and would use again. The next category of skincare I'll talk about is makeup removers and cleansers. So I used up two Biodermas. One 500ml one, one 250ml one. I really like Bioderma. I've got another 500ml bottle in my bathroom at the moment but it's cheap and affordable in comparison to like more high-end micellar waters and they all kind of do the same thing as far as I'm concerned so yeah for like 
a makeup removing step or a first cleanse, whatever you want to call it. I definitely like Bioderma and the 250ml Bioderma was worth $10.90 and the 500ml Bioderma was worth $14.90. From Almay I used up these Lash Care Oil Free Makeup Remover Pads. Absolutely love these. I actually tried to repurchase these, bought the ones that had oil in them because I couldn't remember what ones I'd had before and I didn't like the other version as much so when I went back to New York I actually repurchased these ones and got the right ones and they're super gentle they don't irritate my eyes but they take everything off which is really odd because these are like the gentle oil free ones and the other ones I bought were the oily ones and I don't feel they do quite as good a job as the oil free ones so I really really like these and these are worth $4.79. The last makeup remover that I used up was the Lush Ultra Bland this is one of the small tubs and which is worth $18.95. I really like this. I can take it right over my eyes even when they're at their most like eczema -y sensitive stages. Really do like it. Have repurchased it. Will continue to repurchase it. And then the cleanser that I used was this one which is the Cetaphil cleanser. This is just super gentle, like nothing special about it. I wouldn't rush to repurchase it but if somebody, if it came into my possession again I would happily use it up. I didn't like love it, I didn't hate it, I'm just pretty neutral about it. It didn't irritate my skin. If I, if I had it again I would use it again and that was worth $8.79 towards my total. Serums are one of the areas that I feel like I know what I like in. So as you can see I used up four of this which is the Kiehl's Hydro Plumping Retex texturizing serum concentrate it's just super lightweight it basically hydrates your skin I can always tell when I'm using this versus when I'm not using this I've not been using this this month just because I've been trying to use up some other things and I can tell I'm like I'm super excited for when I get to put it back into my routine. The other serum that I finished was an Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. If you've watched my channel before you know that I love this. It's just repairing for my skin. It plumps up my skin like no matter how irritated my skin is I feel like I can use this and I know it's going to help. I've finished up multiples of it. I have it in stock for this year and I will continue to repurchase this. Big fan of both of these serums basically. The next category is eye creams. I'm going to be honest I'm not going to talk about these four individually. These are all much of a muchness. They're all just very gentle hydrating eye creams. Liked all of them. Would repurchase any of them. There's not really any anti-aging or anything. They are just like moisturizing eye creams. The only one that was any different really is this one which is the Alginist Elevate. This is just like a sample as you guys can see. It's five mils. A little goes a really long way with this and I noticed a huge difference in like the firmness of the skin around my eyes when I was using this. Obviously I am 26. Anti-aging is probably not my number one priority but I did feel a difference in the smoothness and the firmness of my skin when I was using this so I would highly highly recommend this one. I have two more of this size which I'm so excited to use this year and I would definitely purchase the full size of this. I really, really liked it. The next category is facial moisturisers. I used up this one from Kiehl's which is the Ultra Facial Cream. I really like this. They do have an oil-free version which I do have as well but I think I actually prefer this version. The oil-free version is definitely better in the morning when I don't want to get oily through the day and I don't want my makeup to slide off. I feel like my skin prefers this one so I end up using this as a night cream quite a lot but I do really like it. It's just a basic moisturising cream. It's not, not supposed to be anti-aging in it anything like that. I do always feel it hydrates my skin really well. And then the other one kills as well and this is the Skin Rescuer. This is supposed to be anti-redness. I did like it as a moisturiser. It's not overwhelming for my skin so I do quite like that one in the morning. But I think in terms of anti-redness, I think I'm better just getting my anti-redness from makeup products if I want to and then like things that will calm my skin in general, will calm the inflammation that causes redness. And then to an extent I've also just got like very pale skin that it's prone to redness unfortunately so I'm not sure about the anti-redness kind of claims on it but I did like it as a moisturiser and I would repurchase it. For face masks these were my three kind of deep cleaning face masks that I used up. I used up multiples of this. I've only counted one into my total because I've only kept one but I really really like this one. So this is from Boots, the Boots own brand sheet mask, charcoal and willow bark. I just feel this is like so so good especially if your skin's feeling a bit congested or even if you feel like you've got a spot brewing under the skin. This is just a super easy one to put on because it's a sheet mask as well. It's ideal for travelling. If your skin's anything like mine, I find after like being on a plane, it's always ready to fit like a new spot is going to appear from somewhere. And this is just ideal for that kind of holiday breakout. I also used up this from Kiehl's, the Rare Earth Deep Pore Cleansing Mask. I really like this. It's super cleansing. I can always see the difference in like the kind of oil build up in my pores when I use this but it doesn't dry my skin out so I have repurchased this and I think I've actually got 
a backup of it ready to go when my repurchase runs out because it is quite nearly done so I'm a big fan of this mask and lastly I've got the Super Facialist by Una Brennan range yeah again it's just their deep cleaning mask I did quite like this one but I just prefer the Kiehl's one I can't quite put my finger on why but you know when you just prefer something if somebody bought me this again I would use it up but I just prefer the Kiehl's one in terms of moisturizing sheet masks I used up a box of the Indeed Hydroluron sheet masks absolutely love these would repurchase them again just great for putting an injection of hydration into your skin again perfect for traveling the other one that I used up is the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair this is the power foil mask so this is a sheet mask but it's like foil on the back to push it even deeper and probably not surprising given what I said about how much I love the serum but Again, I really, really like this mask. I would definitely repurchase it. I just got one just to try it first because the box is quite expensive, but I would be inclined to pay for the box. Absolutely loved it. I really felt a difference in my skin after it. So both of these would be repurchases for me. And the skincare that I used up was worth $706.60. So as you've just seen, my skincare empties were my biggest category and I used up $706.60 worth of skincare last year. I used up $142.23 worth of makeup like cosmetic products and then I used up $191.47 worth of hair products. So my total that I've got in this sheet for what you saw in this video that I used last year is actually $1,040.30. So that's what I managed last year when I wasn't making a conscious effort to try to use things up. And I also know I did, I did definitely use more than that because I said there was things like sheet masks that I know that I used that I just haven't kept the packaging for. So all that I've totaled up other than that mini shampoo, which I know I used and has clearly just gone in the bin, is literally what's there. So I know I've used more than that and I wasn't counting things like samples and whatever. So it's been really cheering because I think reverse rose should be actually pretty attainable. So I've decided I'm actually going to go for $2,000 worth of product used up this year instead of the thousand. So because I, I feel like if I did a thousand last year without trying like with an effort and with trying to consciously finish products I should be able to do $2,000 worth of product like that shouldn't be that much of an issue so I'm really excited I'm so glad I did this exercise so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video I hope it's been helpful to see like what I actually used when I wasn't trying to and you know what I'm like oh I definitely want to repurchase or things that I wouldn't I feel like a lot of the time with YouTube like people are using so much and getting sent so much as well if they're at that kind of level that I am I don't know, I'm like honestly taking less and less recommendations from YouTubers at that kind of high level because I just think, you know, if I've got so much stuff that is problematic to me and I'm having to like make a conscious effort to use products up, like how can you possibly use something enough to have an informed opinion on it when you get sent everything? I just, I don't know, I'm not trying to like, you know, I'm not thinking of certain YouTubers or anything, it's not like a personal thing with someone, but I just think when you get that much volume of product to take from, like, I don't know, I'm trusting it less and less. For me, like, empties videos I really appreciate because I know the person has literally used that product to the very end, like, they have finished that product, their opinion on it is, like, safe to take. Does that make any sense? I hope you guys see what I'm saying here. Um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will speak to you in the next one. Bye!